Okay, so when state diagrams which describe state machines can be used? Well, I guess the answer is when we have dynamic behavior, such as, for instance, creation of objects and objects going out of scope or being destroyed. When the objects accumulate the values of their attributes over the life cycle. Uh, for example, here, um, in case of a visitor example in our um, um, elevator project uh, in the problems uh, solution we could use uh, use an agenda uh, of uh, of the visitor and of course it can be po dynamically populated dynamically consumed the same thing with tasks we can assign various tasks to the visitor so all of this can be realized through the implementation of a state machine uh, which uh, can be the core a solution to to the implementation of this class objects that represent equipment with this with distinct operational cycle i guess all the conversation that we had about the elevator class applies to this uh, in a classic way objects that can be constructed in stages well that of course as well may be um, applicable to a visitor uh, situation because initially when abstract factory creates a specific type of visitor later on a scenario class simulation scenario class could use this visitor to assign additional tasks or make updates to other parts of its configuration and it may also decide uh, what should be the arrival floor for this uh, visitor when uh, we consider different floors where the visitors could enter the building when objects represents a request or tasks again there should be some some sort of um, uh, similarity uh, in this part of the visitor but generally speaking i guess the main application of this bullet is in case of transactions so basically we can have a transaction which just accumulates information then transaction that can be in progress then transaction that can be committed or transaction that can be rolled back to the initial state so that's you know that's that's a little different a different aspect right here i don't i don't view this visitor as being transactional object objects that are involved in dynamic relationships so this actually may apply very well to the visitor configuration because at some point when we consider further implementation of um, uh, the structure uh, for this uh, elevator uh, building elevator uh, simulation project we may discover that visitor may uh, be able to visit different places so when the visitor is visiting a uh, floor, a uh, specific floor in the building, or when the visitor uh, is entering the elevator and starts riding the elevator, uh, we can say that the visitor could be in dynamic relationships with a visitable place. So uh, a floor and an elevator are examples of visitable uh, places in our environment so this could could apply pretty well uh, to the situation with the visitor and the rest of the environment that we can build uh, for the system let's design a state machine uh, for the visitor class and this uh, state machine uh, is going to be made up of a set of states and a set of events that cause transitions from one state to another so for example we could have a table like this okay and we can add a caption to this uh, uh, document right here we can say that this is a visitor state machine design that we put together And so uh, we have a combination of all possible uh, states um, and events that uh, can uh, be placed in this table to demonstrate transition from the current state to the new state, like this. So, for instance, um, uh, we can definitely specify that uh, our visitor uh, can be visiting 
a specific floor in the building. So visiting floor is one of the candidates to uh, to have in 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 our um, uh, implementation. So the visitor uh, may also be uh, waiting for the elevator, uh, first uh, attempt to call the elevator. So basically, when the visitor is in, in is in process of calling the elevator, we can recognize it as a as a separate state. In addition to this, once the call is placed, so basically the the user approaches the panel with the call buttons on specific floor, pushes the button. So then we can. Um, place uh, once the call is made successfully we can now uh, make our visitor uh, wait for the elevator so now it can be in state of waiting for the elevator so supposedly the, then the, the elevator arrives so we can be uh, transitioning to a different state uh, such as boarding the elevator so of course part of the boarding the elevator is also using the panel inside the elevator to specify what is the destination floor okay then uh, we can start riding the elevator and essentially wait for arrival of our elevator at the requested floor so eventually when we arrive at our destination we can uh, start the process of uh, uh, onboarding the elevator right so we can we can decide that we want to onboard the elevator at specific floor um, and uh, so these are examples of um, uh, of the uh, the states that uh, the visitor could be uh, operating in so now also remember that we we have um, a, a combination of the data attributes that we may use when analyzing um, and when working in these different uh, well-defined states. For example, when uh, visiting the floor, when our visitor is visiting a specific floor in the building, perhaps there is a purpose for this and we can recognize this possible idea of uh, checking the agenda, right? There should be um, um, the, um, the, actually the, the, the list of tasks for this floor and decide that we still have tasks to do at this floor and so we can be just uh, going from a visiting floor to continue visiting the floor. So this is like self-transition. We just checked our, our uh, state of the data right here while we're visiting the floor. And we decided that we still have some floor tasks to complete. So we just continue to stay in the same state. So basically we just transition back to the same uh, state. So this is one of the states definitely that we could stay for uh, a certain period of time. Now how these events originate and where they originate from? Well, they could be originating from multiple sources. Remember we have this update state operation inside the visitor. So the rest of the system is responsible to periodically call this operation inside our visitor class and tell the visitor to update its state, to check for events. When the elevator arrives, it may also call this update state and specify that uh, the elevator just arrived. And so other objects in the system may be able to communicate with the visitor and uh, let the visitor know that um, it, the visitor needs to update its state. So the next possibility here is that, uh, for instance, the set of tasks to complete at this floor is, is, is all done. There's nothing left to do. So we can then also check the agenda, right? And the agenda is basically the list of floors that we want to visit. And decide that we want to go to the next floor. Okay, so this is like an event uh, agenda check and we want to go to the next floor. So then when we may be transitioning to this state calling the elevator, right? So here in this table, we specify that we go from this state in case if there is no, no more tasks to complete. And also now uh, we, we still have other floors to visit. So we want to call the elevator um, and be able to ride to that specific floor. Now, there's, there could be also one more possibility, which is uh, also uh, that the agenda is, is empty. 
so there's there, there are no more floors to visit are left so in that case we still can go to calling the elevator right so we can call the elevator and basically uh, specify that we want to now move to the to the destination which is the arrival floor so we want to move back to the arrival floor that we can at this stage we can exit uh, exit the building and stop participation in this um, in this simulation so now we're in the state of calling the elevator for example all right so now what's what's possible is that we can um, we can now check that uh, the destination request is complete so basically um, we, we transition to state call that we want to call the elevator the next time update happens so the next time this this um, operation is called to, to let us uh, make progress through through our agenda right and we are in the state of calling the elevator so then we uh, we call the elevator to this floor so we make a call into the rest of the system and uh, we want to call the elevator and now that this is complete right so the destination request is complete so now we want to transition to to a state that's waiting for the elevator so of course in this state you see there is a big difference we're still visiting the floor but instead of just visiting the floor with the possibility to to completion of the floor specific tasks now we don't do any of this because our agenda is now to wait for the elevator to arrive and and start riding the elevator so then of course at some point the system sends the elevator to this floor okay so we now say that the elevator has arrived so the elevator arrival at the floor is definitely an event uh, important to our visitor. So the next time again, the update is happening and the message comes that the elevator has arrived. So of course, now we can transition to board, to board the elevator. So we want to be in the state of boarding the elevator. So we now transition to this state. And I specifically like position all of these states initially to be able to roll through these possibilities of discussion of these events. So number six, the next uh, the next possibility right here is that we say that uh, in, if we, if if our visitor now in the stage of the boarding the elevator to complete the boarding, it needs to push the button on the panel of the elevator and specify what should be the destination floor where this visitor wants to travel next so once this is done right so the destination request is complete we start riding the elevator so we transition to the next uh, um, state which is riding the elevator okay so of course now we're no longer doing other checks we're just waiting for the message from the elevator uh, to tell us that uh, now it's time to onboard or that we have arrived at the specific floor all right so now we um supposedly that now we have arrived at a specific floor so the elevator may be uh, sending messages uh, to all uh, the passengers uh, riding this elevator and and telling them arrival and announcing the arrival of, of, at every floor so for instance uh, uh, you know the, there could be other passengers in this elevator and we may or may not yet arrived at, at our destination so we can always check the the arrival at the specific floor against the destination so this is why i prefer to store the destination floor until we arrive as one of the uh, attributes remembered by the visitor right here so that we can check for this condition that when the elevator is broadcasting to us that we just arrived at this at a certain floor we want to be able to compare this floor number that we arrived at with the destination floor that we remembered uh, when we decided to, to uh, um, to, to place our destination request I guess right here at this stage right here we could have updated this value so uh, the second possibility here is that uh, we uh, uh, we can also have the situation that the floor that we just arrived at is not our destination so it does not uh, equal our destination so we just continue to ride the elevator 
right so we just ignore this and we say okay we're not going to onboard right now instead we're just going to continue uh, riding the elevator so then um, I also um, uh, would like to uh, continue this with onboarding the elevator uh, because now we're just for, for instance if, if we if we just uh, arrived at our destination we transition to onboarding the elevator so why this event is important well number one there also could be uh, two possibilities so one of the um, uh, possibility is that we may be arriving at the arrival fl uh, floor so uh, I, I am trying to design uh, the system in such way that arrival floor is not the floor that we're visiting so basically when we uh, when we ride the elevator to other floors this means visiting floors but the arrival floor is special it's where we arrive so meaning that if we just onboarded the elevator and the floor that we just onboarded is our arrival floor we want to exit the building and we want to basically stop our participation in the simulation so this could be implemented different ways I'm just trying to demonstrate that these possibilities do exist and so these these are all possible ways to think about states and to ways to organize the simulation uh, based on these states and so the second possibility might be that uh, we just arrived at the floor which is not the floor at which we originally arrived so then we just continue visiting this floor and we go right back to the state of visiting the floor